May 2022, CSEC Mathematics paper, question 3. This says here, the diagram below shows four shapes. P, Q, R, and S. Alright. So P is the only one that is shaded. On a square grid. Okay. What does it say? Describe fully the single transformation that maps P onto Q. Okay, we'll do that first, but let me see what the other one says. R and then S. Hmm. Alright. If I can copy the square grid and put it over to our whiteboard. Nice. We have our square grid right here. All right? Now, we want P onto Q. It maps P to Q. So, that's what's going on here. The single transformation that maps P to Q. And <clears throat> they wanted to explain it out. Right? Explain it out in English. Maybe adding a few numbers. But once you see they give you the lines, you have some amount of explanation to do. How did P get onto Q? That's the question. Let me see something. Suppose I draw all of this. P again. One, two, three, four. That's four grids here. One, two, three, four. Then two going up. One going up on this side, one going across. Alright. So I have P there. Let me move. Oh no. Alright, let me... Where is it? My, my. Okay, good. I wanted to select these lines. All of these lines. Want them selected. Didn't select this one up here. All right, let me put it right here. No. I want to rotate everything. No. I want to move it somewhere here. This is P. Where's the center of rotation? It's here. It's the center. So if I put P here, right? If P rotates right about this point here, let's spin P around. Suppose P had rotated about this point. You see it would match Q. I would be able to get it to rotate about this point right here. But if P should rotate 180 degrees clockwise, or even anti-clockwise, it would match up to Q. So it's a rotation. You see? This was P, you know, and it matched to Q. Let me rotate it back like it was before. Right? I'm going to shift it. It's P. So, I would say what we have here is a rotation 180 degrees about the point. Which point is it now? A 180 degree rotation. 180 degrees rotation. Could be clockwise or anti-clockwise, whichever one you want. You end up in the same place. About the point seven seven. So you see that. So that's what you would write. 
rotation of 180 degrees about the point 77 to match to Q alright so that's something with Q oh R now how did it get to R mm -hmm. let's see something here see if you should consider this line here let's go halfway between the this point and this point one two to the left one two one two two to the right two to the left all right halfway would bring you at this point now i'm going to draw a line this line let me use a different color for the line let's draw a red line right there all right now the red line has to shift back let me try it again all right good now you notice if you hold up the red line as a mirror line you'll see the distance here two to the left two to the right two to the left goes right to the tip to the nose of p and q and p and r right here right at this edge one two three to the left from this edge one two three to the right to the mirror line and it happens for the other parts of it so here you can see that R is generated by a reflection in the line. What is the equation of this line? You tell me. If you notice, the point that it goes through is 1, x equal 1. So the equation of this red line, the mirror line, is x equal 1. So what you would write is, R is generated by a reflection of P about the line X equals 1. So that's the explanation you give right here. Right? Or it is mapped. So R is mapped by a reflection of P about the line X equals 1. So in that case, X equals 1 is the mirror line. Alright? So you can see that. So that's what you write in this area. And then R you want R where is R oh it was R we did a while ago S I should say not R what am I saying R S so Q was from the rotation about the point seven seven right Q is mapped by rotating P 180 degrees about the point seven seven and the rotation is clockwise, or you could say the rotation is anti-clockwise. You end up the same place, whichever. R is from a ref is mapped by a reflection of P in the line x equals one. Right? It's a reflection about it. But the thing is, you know, if you have this point, right, and then here from this point All right, let me redraw that line again between here and here because I see it's rotating at the center All right when you rotate that line It 
showing me a rotation symbol, but it's not rotating anyway. You know, with these technologies, sometimes that's what that's what happens. But anyway, um, when you rotate, or when you when you reflect P into the line it's equal one, it goes to R. All right. Um, the next thing is S. Uh -huh. How do you get S now? S from P to S. Now I'm going to say here that you have two um, transformations when it comes to S. There are two transformations. Let me erase it. Right? You have P will have to undergo two transformations. What you could say is that P no S is mapped from a translation of P and the translation vector is what is it now? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. It is zero, negative five. And by an enlargement of scale factor two. Why do I say that? Let us see. How do you get S from P? I'm going to draw P again. I have these lines here. This is P. Alright? Now, if I select these lines, translation vector, the translation vector, the x part of the vector is zero because it neither move left nor right, but the y part is one, two, three, four, five downwards. So remember, the translation vector looks like this. You have the x and you have the y. So here now, you did, the x is the left and right movement. It did not move left nor right, so the x movement is zero. Y is up and down movement. Up would be a positive, down is a negative. P would have to move down, so it's a negative. How many units down? From this corner here, one, two, three, four, five units down. So it's negative five. So that is a translation or a slide, the translation vector. All right. So you first have a translation where the vector is zero five, ne zero negative five. I mean, then an enlargement. Enlargement because as you see, S is bigger than the origin than P translated down here. How much bigger? Now I notice that P is one too high, but S is one, two, three, four high, twice as high. The same way, P is uh, this part of P is one long but this part of s the corresponding part of s is one two long all right here p this part of p is one two three four long but the corresponding part of s is one two three four that's four five six seven eight eight is twice as long as four so, it's an enlargement with scale factor 2. Alright? So, translation 0, negative 5, scale factor 2.
So what you would say here, what you would write in this region, is that S is mapped from a translation of P by the vector 0, negative 5, and then followed by an enlargement of scale factor 2. You could have done the enlargement first, then the translation. You end up the same place, whichever way you want to put it. But, remember now, the translation, 0, negative 5. Another way you could say it is that it's a translation, 5 units in the y direction. In, in the negative y direction or downwards but no movement in the x direction but you might as just well just say it's a translation vector and you write the vector 0 negative 5 right whichever way you want to put it all right and then we have part b and the grid provided on page 10 where's page 10 uh, is it the same grid here? Oh, yeah, right. It's on the grid provided on page 10. Draw the image of the shape P after a translation by the vector negative 2, 3. Let me just copy and paste this over here. Paste. I'm going to move it down, but here now. Move it down further, just covering what we had. All right, we could erase this, erase these things here. This is there. All right, so what it says here is on the grid provided on page 10, the same grid, draw the image of P. We want the image of P. After a translation by the vector negative two three negative two three that is a vector. Let's try it up here. Translation vector is negative two three. Now remember what this means is a movement of two units to the left, three units up. You see that? The x part is negative, so it's to the left, and it's two units. So basically, what you're going to have happen is a movement, one, two to the left, and three units up, one, two, three. So this edge will be here. All right? Then, This corner here would be one, two to the left, and one, two, three, up. That's what happened here. This corner here would be one, two to the left, and one, two, three, up. All right? So you can see so far what's going to happen with this line. Now, this point is going to come here. But this point here would be how many units to the left? One, two to the left and one, two, three, up. Nice. So you can see that this line up here is going to be ready. Alright? And get rid of some of these lines in the mapping. No, all right, could get rid of this one, this one. This thing gives me so much trouble. This one, this one. All right, as for. 
this corner right here where would it end up one two to the left one two three up it would end up right here so right at this corner you can see it's going to be ready you see that that's what happens right at that corner there as for this corner here I'm going to move it one two to the left and one two three up so you can see where that corner is going to end up right right at this spot so you move up here and move right here so here what you have is this shape what they say you should label it as again label it as t all right so this is t so you see that the translation vector negative 2 3 means that from the general translation vector wait, this is x and this is y to the right is a positive to the left is negative as for y upward is positive downwards this thing is in the way downwards is negative all right so you see that so that's our answer and that is question three completed all right next time we move on to question four so i'll see you then